my students, we have gone through the course outline, and I believe now everything is making a lot of sense. We can tell what is expected of us. And please, I always ask my students, kindly keep on reading. Keep on reading. We don't want a situation where uh, the highlights are to be used to answer your questions. And as I have promised, we are going to give you a lot of materials online. We are going to interact with you a lot. I know we will be trained on how to interact, and therefore you should not get very worried. I was, was just to tell you what is this that is needed of you. Having said this, again, we go through the topics. I'll be very fast because I think in the course outline I've explained a lot. And the first one is what is pedagogy? As I said, remember our topic, our uh, unit title, we said uh, our unit code was BAM, or rather is BAM 1202, and the unit title is Fundamentals of Pedagogy. Why have I said this? I've seen students come in and uh, they, they, they just want to see their lecturers uh, and they are just asked which unit is this now. The only thing I can remember it was being taught by somebody whose hair was short. I hope you can always remember now. It's BEM 1202, Fundamentals of Pedagogy. And because you know Marie Teach, uh, I believe all of us are practicing teachers, we understand the importance of a title. That when we talk about the fundamentals of pedagogy, there must have been a reason why it was, it was referred to as so. And whatever else that we are going to discuss rotates around the same. And therefore, that's why it is important for us to define the terms. And as I said, when we talk about fundamentals, we are simply talking about the essential issues. My students, any time I go to class and I talk about fundamentals, they remind me of um, a singer, uh, a Kenyan singer, who sang about fundamentals. Yeah, he talked about these are my fundamentals. <laughs> I, I, I like it because uh, though he talked about the fundamentals instead of fundamentals, he was de de uh, describing a girl and was saying how, you know, the essential issues that he loves about this girl. I may not say exactly what he loved about the girl, but he had a nice understanding that when we talk about fundamentals, we are talking about which are these very important, the core issues that need to be discussed. Then the pedagogy, as I said, uh, I like that others call it pedagogy. Pedagogy, I don't know, but I think we should be referring to it as pedagogy. And I'm saying the word comes from Greek, uh, just meaning uh, uh, pyros meaning child and agol meaning to read. So it literally means to read the child, to lead the child. You are leading the child. And when, when we talk about leading, there's something that comes to my mind. You cannot lead from behind. You can only lead from front. And that's why we are saying you have to have the content right. You have to have the instructional methods right. You have to have you, you know, motivation, communication, and everything else right, so that you are ahead of the student. Because I always say, if you are a leader, you have to be where you are supposed to be before the others. Otherwise, if the others get to where you are before you, where you are going before you, you become a follower. And therefore, as a teacher, it is important to understand when we talk about this pedagogy is to lead a child. As I said, it's an art or a science. And when we talk about this art or a science, you can, you know, it's both an art and a, in fact, it's not an art or a science, it's both art and science. Art will be required to come up. Uh, think about who is this an artist? An artist is very creative, somebody who is very creative to come up with a, a product. And when you are very creative about this, I'm just imagining, for example, when it comes to classroom motivation, you have to be very creative to understand what motivates my, my, my students. When it comes even to preparation of instructional materials and resources, you know, you don't have to go to the shops and buy everything. You can even use the local materials to come up with the with the resources that you need to use. How about maybe how you organize your class physically? Yeah, classroom organization. You have to be a good artist for you to understand who sits where. Then we are saying it's also a science. When you talk about science, it's systematic. It's a process that needs to be followed. There's a lot of research that needs to be done. And the same case when it comes to education. That when we talk about their systematic lessons, their systematic processes, you cannot start with the materials that are for the form four and you teach them to the form ones. 
there's the way that each each and every content links to the other and therefore you have to understand how they're supposed to be done sometimes you may even have a class that is giving you problem you problems you need to do action kind of research there's a lot of research that needs to be done even the very last thing that we have discussed about you know dif differentiations in the classroom you have to have enough knowledge we have talked about the theories and how you have to also get uh, to interpret these theories in your class needs a lot of science then uh, we are also saying it aims the pedagogy it aims led from the full development of human beings to the skills acquisition and this is what we are talking about when we will be talking about uh, this full development we are talking about that this pedagogy should bring an all-rounded person and an all-rounded person we are talking about somebody who has the knowledge that is cognitive somebody who has the values and morals that is effective somebody who can perform a skills that is psychomotor and somebody who can also relate with the others and so for the social kind of skills then pedagogy I love this. Pedagogy forms an international, uh, in intentional, intentional, that you are aware, uh -huh, intentional relationship between the teacher and the learner. And if it is intentional, as I said again, you have to be aware of what needs to be done. If it is in uh, intentional, you have to plan for it. If it is intentional, you have to understand your students and your students have to, uh, must also be ready to be taught. Because sometimes it's not all the time that the students are ready to be taught. It calls for the creativity of the teacher to create this intentional relationship between the teacher and the learner. Aha! Uh -huh. Concepts in pedagogy. I love this. There's a book here for us, Principles and Practice of Education. Uh, and it's, it's a good book by J.S. Farrant. It's a book that you can read. And there are some concepts yeah, that you just need to understand. And one of them is teaching. And I'll be very fast about this. And when you talk about teaching, it's a process of showing. You show. You can illustrate. You can demonstrate. You know, you show. You know, also being a role model, you show. You can show how the students are supposed to dress, how they're supposed to walk, how they're supposed to do all these things. And also telling someone how to do something. Telling, like the way I'm telling you to you know, I'm telling you how to motivate your students. I'm telling you how to communicate in the classroom. That is telling. But we are also saying that it's not only telling, and that's why we talked about that, you know, the two uh, different strategies and their methods, that it's not only telling, it's not only lecturing, but there's also the showing how. Then how about learning? Learning, when you talk about learning, is a relatively permanent change in behavior. Look at this out of an experience. Look at this, relatively permanent in behavior. You have heard sometimes people wondering, they are, you know, they hear like, oh, oh my God, you don't know that student, uh, that person has gone through school and now is, and then they ask, you mean the person has gone to form four? Why do I always feel like maybe the person dropped in class eight? It's because there is no that change. The way you used to behave when you're in Form 1 is the same way that you're behaving in Form 4. It's the same way you're behaving with your first degree. Then people will feel that there's no learning that has been taking place. The way you perceive things, if the, the way you perceive things, even through, after going through education is not changing, then we can say, we are sorry. Learning has not, been take, uh, has, has not taken place. And we say, when you talk about learning, is all that remains you know, you have attended all your classes. What remains is actually what learning is all about. And remember what I have said, and I want to repeat this again, that if there is no change in you, a relatively permanent change in you, that is why we doubt. That's why the doubt comes in. That's why we feel, are you sure? Are you sure? And I have given you a book to read more about that. Then we are saying the teaching and learning process involves a few people here and a few other components. They involve the teacher, definitely, a facilitator, like the way I'm doing. There's a learner, my students, my good students, you are, my, you are the learners. The instructional materials, the instructional materials, this could be many things. They could be the content that you are teaching, okay? For example, you could have the textbooks that you need. You could have other charts. You could have the realia. Maybe you are teaching about young kids. 
Uh, and I always see these ones, especially in lower classes, and I really love it. They are being taught about uh, maybe a hospital, and there's a corner for the hospital, there's a corner for the garden, there's a corner for all these, you know, the, all these materials are required. There's also the instructional strategies, the methodology. I have already talked about the strategies. We have the expository, we have the heuristic, and out of them we have the methods of teaching that we have already discussed. And there is the instructional evaluation or what we call assessment. At the end of the day, we say what is not measured cannot be done or is not rewarded. And this is true. Sometimes you find that um, if you just don't assess what has been done, people are not likely to meet their targets. And I believe this is why these days, uh, of course, there is, um, uh, we do the performance contracting. You say, what is it that I am going to achieve? You know, what is it that I'm going to achieve? And then after the end of that period, it is also expected of you that they'll go back and look at why you able to do what you need to do. Because if people sometimes are left on their own, we know about the theory that talks about the theory X and the theory Y, sometimes we could even be rewarding failures instead of successes. Then training. When we talk about the training, is the process of teaching somehow, someone how to perform a given task. Teaching someone how to perform a given task. And I can give an example like when we teach you to be good teachers, how to motivate in a classroom, as I have kept on saying, how to organize your, uh, your, your lesson, how to come up with schemes of work, you know, that is now training. And it is done repetitively till you get it. And I have to say that actually you find, for example, uh, when you are being, uh, being trained to be a teacher, you, you'll have so many units, you'll have so many units, uh, in this case, you know, we have, for example, many common units that you need to be trained into, there's management, uh, you know, of education, there's management and administration of education, uh, there's instructional, uh, you know, uh, instructional learning that will be done, or, uh, you know, there's so much, there's the, there's the, uh, teaching practice that will also be done. There's micro teaching that will also be done. There's so much that you'll be exposed to a lot of training till at the end of the day, we are comfortable to say that this person can do this. And I like even our, our mothers and our grandparents, they, they were also very good in training. And what they would make sure is that today you try to do the ugari, they find that today you did not remember to, to make water boil very well, tomorrow they train you. They demonstrate, they illustrate, till at the end of the day they can actually look and say, wow, well done. Uh -huh. Relationship between teaching and learning. As I said, this is an intentional kind of relationship, intentional. Uh, between teaching and learning, and we are seeing their dynamics, the uh, relationship between the two concepts, and they like teaching is promoting and facilitating learning. When you are a teacher, you are promoting and you are facilitating learning. Then, it also, teaching also involves some amount of learning by the teacher. And this is what I say, a true teacher is the one who examines the knowledge they have. So that before you impart it to your student, you're already good enough at it. And when you find a gap, you go back and learn more. Because you are the mirror to yourself and to your students. And therefore, that's why we are saying teaching, it involves a lot of learning by the teacher. Other emerging issues, like now we have the emerging issues. There are many issues that will come up with this, and maybe the students will have different kind of, uh, they have gone through emotional issues, and we have to know how do we handle it. So that's why we are saying that there must be a lot of learning. The teacher uses the foundational knowledge. This is one of them, like the one that we are talking about, the foundational knowledge. Uh, there are other units in uh, education that actually gives you the foundation knowledge. Both teaching and learning are processes which are continuous in nature, definitely. Whether sometimes you are saying anything or not, as I said, you find that you are still teaching, your students are learning something. When you get to class in good time, the students are, they still learn. And you can remember, and maybe you can relate to this, my students, that even when you are where you are, where you are teaching, the students know who is on duty. There are those ones, eh, hey, so-and-so is on duty. You find all of them are very orderly and they get to school in good time. 
The others are so and so. Ah, don't even worry. Things are just working. And that is why I'm saying it's continuous in nature. Also in the classroom, the way you interact is continuous. So you cannot say now teaching has stopped from here and learning has stopped there. It's continuous. Both the teacher and the learner can transpose positions as each of them influences the other. And this is what we are saying. When you talk about transposing, we are simply saying, you can, you know, a teacher can actually at one point be the learner and can learn from the students. The learner can also be a teacher at one point and can inform the, the teacher. And therefore, that's why we said, do not look at your students as empty slates. Because at a point, they have a lot that they have brought in class. This is just a diagram that shows the, uh, what we have just been talking about when you have to make a decision as a teacher, consult the syllabus, interpretation of the objectives, choices of the, uh, the, the topics to be done that through the scheme of work, selection of resource materials that have, as I said, they have to be dictated by the time, the objectives that you want to do, the kind of students that you have, and you know, uh, even the learning environment in which you are. Because, of course, for example, if you want to demonstrate how to milk a cow, I don't expect you to bring a cow in class. So these are some of the things that we are talking about that will also uh, dictate what kind of materials you are going to use. Selection of the methods, actual class presentation, as we say, classroom uh, management. You have to think about how am I going to present, which materials need actual le lecture methods, which ones uh, needs a student uh, oriented methods and so forth. Then assessment and evaluation, and I say do not wait till, you know, when we talk about, for example, monitoring and evaluation. Monitoring is throughout. Sometimes I look at people and they are saying that they are teachers. You look at them and you get worried. The crowd is bored. Everybody is just bored and the person is going on and on and on. Sometimes it's just about lunchtime, like now, and I'm still going on. The bell has gone, and the students are just wondering when will we ever stop. So these are some of the things that we really need to think through. And that is the end of uh, topic one. Thank you very much. And uh, again, I insist, stay safe. Stay safe. It's important. You don't have to go for parties now. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.